Hello guys, I hope um, you can hear, you can see me, see this clearly, all the rest of it. I'm going to uh, start this session on permutation property. I'm going to soon share the screen, see whether the the volume is clear, whether the screen sharing option works perfectly fine, and all the rest of it. Uh, we're going to have a fabulous session. I'm going to just put together a bunch of beautiful questions. Some of my old favorites are sitting there, so I'm looking forward to this. I love formulation property. I think it's a fabulous topic. If you learned uh, the right way, you can have some fun with it. Uh, before we go any further, we're going to leave all the questions on this below the description of this YouTube video. So those of you who are looking at this after the live session is over, look at the questions, try them before doing that. Uh, we, are, we are hosting all our live sessions on a single page online, uh, on online.wine.com. That link will also be provided, so you can go there and access all of that. Thank you. Do check out online.2im.com to so see the trial classes which are available for free. Take them as a demo uh, and then give it a go. Still about uh, quite a few months for this exam, CAT 2018. So you can still start now, prepare well and crack this exam and nail this completely. So uh, don't listen to anyone who says this is too tough to prepare in a four and a half five month window. You can definitely prepare in a four month window. Keep that in mind. We also have a fabulous offer running. Uh, from 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 now till Tuesday. So if you're interested, if you like the course, the first checkpoint is whether you like the course. Then you go to the price angle of it. I find too many students evaluating courses, starting price upwards. Yeah, so try out the course. It's available. You can learn for 10, 15, 20 hours without paying a dime. Go through that. See if the UI works. See if the style of teaching works. See if the pedagogy works. If all of those boxes are ticked, then jump in, buy, and then have a go. They, there's a fabulous offer running over the next three days on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. So if you're going to go for it, go for it really quickly. Definitely prepare and crack those exams. The offer is available for CAT 2018 aspirants and 2019 aspirants. Best wishes for CAT. I'm going to jump in and have a go at this permutation probability session. And so I'm going to share the screen and build from there. Sum of three natural numbers A, B, and C is 10. How many ordered triplets A, B, C exist? It's a wonderful question. It's an absolutely delightful question. Uh, probably on the tougher side, but it sets up a template to discuss a bunch of ideas. So I'm going to go in reasonably deeply for this, uh, just to see what all we can discuss here. But it's a wonderful question. So try this. Sum of three natural numbers A, B, and C is 10. How many ordered triplets A, B, C exist? So to, before we even dive in, I'm going to give some time for you guys to dive in. What do we mean by ordered triplets? Ordered triplets, order matters. What do we mean by that? So suppose we had A equal to 1, B equal to 4, C equal to 5. 1 plus 4 plus 5 is 10. We count this, of course, 1, 4, 5. But then we could have a scenario where A is 4, B is 1, C is 5. That will also get counted. And so 5, 1, 4 will also get counted. When you're seeing ordered triplets or ordered pairs, it's simply order matters. And so, uh, so 1, 4, 5, 4, 1, 5, 5, 1, 4, all of them will get counted. Now, straight away, thinking about this, you can say, look, so maybe what I'll count without ordered pairs. That each of this one, four, five can come in six sets, three factorial. Count unordered pairs and multiply by six. Life seems simple. However, there is a catch. Suppose your numbers were a equal to two, b equal to four, c equal to four. This can be rearranged in only three ways: two, four, 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 two, four, 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 two. So sometimes there are six possibilities. Sometimes there are only three. So let me calculate them. So, ordered pairs, ordered triplets, ordered matters. I told x plus y equal to 10. Find how many ordered pairs exist. 1, 9 will be from 9, 1 will also get counted. That idea, that funda, what is meant by the term ordered, that's important. How we treat it, how we handle it, that we can do later on. I'm going to give about another 30 seconds for you guys to think about this and then outline the method. It's a fabulous way of thinking. I'll get the answer. You'll, you'll, you'll get the answer by brute forcing it. That's easy. You can get to the answer by plugging in a formula. That is also easy. I'm not going to brute force it. I'm not going to plug in a formula. I'm going to construct a wonderful way of thinking about this. And that's one of my all-time favorite thought processes. So 
I, I sat in a class many years ago on one wonderful professor called Mr. Mohedan, and he said, look, this is how you need to do this. And then I thought, that is how the world thought about this. And, and I never came across that method in, in all my 20 subsequent years of learning. So it was his method. And, and quite simply, as a tribute to him, I flipped it. So I love this method, so I'm going to outline this. Sum of three natural numbers A, B, and C is 10. How many ordered triplet sizes? Let's look at this. So some, some three things add up to 10. I'm going to say I'm going to start with 10 sticks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so it's like saying I'm going to allot these three sticks, 10 sticks, or 10 ones, if I can call them that, into three boxes. And I can say I'll allot this into one box, I'll allot this into the second box and allot these into the third box. This first box I'm going to call as A, second box I'm going to call as B, third box I'm going to call as C. Box A, box B, box C. Box A has two sticks in it, box B has three sticks in it, box C has five sticks in it. Two plus three plus five protect. Wonderful. So now we've rejigged this question. You can see that A, B, C, the boxes are nothing but the natural numbers A, B, and C mentioned in the question. So we've converted this question, three natural numbers A, B, and C adding up to 10, nothing but allotting 10 sticks and putting them in three boxes. Right? So one step, we modified this question to look slightly differently. I'm going to modify this even more differently. Say, instead of this, I'm going to put a plus symbol here and a plus symbol here. I don't even have to imagine these boxes. I put a plus symbol here. That means the first two go into A, box A. Put another plus symbol here. The next three go into box B. And then the remaining five go into box C. This question, where we had three natural numbers adding up to 10, we converted that question into sticks being dropped into boxes. And then we say instead of boxes being positioned there, we're using this plus symbol to delineate the boxes. And so this question beautifully, wonderfully now, completely depends on these pluses and where they are positioned. We have plus and plus here and here, that is 2 plus 3 plus 5. We have them here and here, that is 4 plus 2 plus 4. We had them here and here, that is 1 plus 8 plus 1. And so effectively, this question now boils down to where are the two pluses. You can track that here through. And so, in other words, where can I put these two plus symbols? How many slots are there for these plus symbols? There are nine slots. There are ten ones or ten sticks. There are nine caps between them. So nine slots in which we can place these pluses. You have to select two out of these nine slots for the plus symbols times C. You might have heard this formula n minus 1, c r minus 1. This is the logical underpinning of that formula. So 9 c2 is your answer. Find that 9 into 8 by 2, whatever that answer is. So find the number. But the, the, the formula is very easy. n minus 1, c r minus 1. So plug in that in, even you can brute force this. All that is good. But the, but the funda, the way of thinking is very important, very vital. This question, another way of saying one of these questions where you say, there are seven parking lots. In how many ways can you park three cars there such that no two cars are adjacent to each other? So some of those variants are, are similar to this, or there's at least one gap, there's one gap, not more than one gap. Some of those variants are can be restructured like this, and you can plug away and get it. But it's just rearranging ones and pluses. So nine digits and two pluses. So you can we can reconceive this question like that. So I'm going to go to the next one. Sum of three whole numbers A, B, and C is 10. How many ordered triplets A, B, and C exist? And so wonderful, very similar to the one which we saw. A plus B plus C is 10. A, B, and C are whole numbers. And so ordered triplets, we've already seen what that means, what we mean when we say ordered triplets. And so, so we're looking at possibilities like 0, 5, 5, 
ஒன்னுடிபிலிட்டி A0 or B0 or C0. We cannot, put, we cannot accommodate this zero. And we are getting around that. It's putting a plus symbol here. Or you can put A as zero. Or a plus symbol here. Or you put C as zero. And even if you do that, there's no way of accounting for B being zero. That is tricky. And so that is again a, a, a challenge. You have to figure out another mechanism of doing this, another way of doing this. And so, throughout permutation probability, we'll be thinking of ways of re-establishing that question. Same data point, we're going to look at it differently. So, how are we going to do it differently? A plus B plus C is 10. We're going to define three numbers, P, Q, and R. And P is A plus 1, Q is B plus 1, R is C plus 1. Now, I'm going to think about P plus Q plus R. It's nothing but A plus 1 plus B plus 1 plus C plus 1. It's A plus B plus C plus 3. It's 13. Now, each of these is P, Q, R. Each of those is one more than corresponding A, B, C. Think about this. If we found how many ways are there of solving this, then from P we can subtract 1. From Q we can subtract 1. R we can subtract 1 and we get A, B, C. What's the big deal? You're adding 1 and subtracting 1. Can we do this in every scenario? We can do it in only one specific set of scenarios. Imagine the set of values A can take are 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. etc. B can take 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. etc. C can take 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. etc. What can P take? 1, 2, 3, 4. Q 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc., etc. R, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, etc., etc. The beauty of this is this our whole, whole number problem has gotten translated into a natural number problem. This we know how to do, 12C2. So, sum of three whole numbers adding up to 10, the number of solutions, is exactly same as sum of three natural numbers adding up to 13. Just bypass this question and restructure this brilliantly. So, we get n plus r minus 1, c r minus 1, 13 c 2. So this again is a formula that you might have read, seen. I don't care much for the formula, but this way of thinking is brilliant. You're reconstructing a whole number problem as a natural number problem. And then you're done. This question becomes very easy. Uh, to our sticks analogy, it's like saying, instead of having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, Add three sticks and then subtract three sticks. Make it 11, 12, 13. Distribute them in any which way you want. And then subtract one stick, subtract one stick, subtract one stick. Remove a stick each. Add three sticks to the total and then remove one from each box. That way, when you're using this question where we say each box has at least one stick, and then you remove that, each box has at least zero. So the, you, you reconstruct the question as a natural number question and then branch off into becoming it becoming a whole number question. And so you, the whole number problem introduces the zero problem. So remove the zero problem and come back to this one. Try this one. In how many ways can 11 identical toys be placed in Three distinct boxes, such that no box is empty. Identical toys, 11 of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I'm not calling them A, B, C, D till K, I'm calling all of them as T. Into three distinct boxes. So there is a red box, blue box, green box. 
how many go into this box how many into this box how many into this box which ones go into the red blue green boxes we don't need to worry about all toys are identical they are effectively saying how many go into each box not which ones go into each box and so you put three in the red box three in the blue box and the remaining five in the green box you're not worried about a b c going into the red box d e f going into the blue box that's not what we are worried about and each box should have at least one toy that's a, that's a key criteria so keep that in mind so we need to have at least one in each and the number of toys matters not which toys we're not selecting toys we're just putting a certain number of toys into something and a three three five would be very different from a three five three from a five three three if you're allotting it as three three five which box has five is important that's the, this is the red box that has five or the blue box or the green box in other words we'll have to count three three five three five three and five three three all three versions or variants need to be counted so keep that in mind three three five three five three five three three all three need to be counted again any construct this question i've set it up on a platter for you to say oh my god this is just another way of calling the same thing what is that same thing this is nothing but a plus b plus c equal to 11 a b c are natural numbers and c2 done 11 identical toys placed into three distinct boxes identical toys therefore only the number matters which toy doesn't matter we're never going to do 11 c2 or 11 c4 they're identical into three distinct boxes or we are worrying about ordered triplets we care whether it is 335 or 353 or 11 things distributed into three numbers in ordered triplets or sum of three numbers is equal to 11 three natural numbers because each box has to have at least one no box is empty so a plus b plus c equal to 11 how many ordered triplets a b c exist such that a b and c are all natural numbers that's what this question boils down to that's what it is and wonderful question this question one two and three are all all three are wonderful beautiful questions so on this kind of idea that uh, kind of sits in your mind only after you've seen it once try four five questions and then seen it again so don't, don't just uh, gloss over it uh, it has to consolidate in your mind in your style you have to reimagine this and say oh oh that's what this boils down to oh this is fantastic now i get this and then do a couple of questions then it will set completely because a beautiful idea broken down that n minus 1 c r minus 1 n plus r minus 1 c r minus 1 both are wonderful beautiful but in the end simple formula not uh, mumbo jumbo they just had it and so you can logically construct a scenario to make sense of that formula that is very 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 vital in this topic so the next one beautiful question not that easy give it a go this is 75 percent number systems 25 percent counting i'm going to give quite some time with this you'll get a lot of questions where uh, number systems and permutation combination come together a couple of ideas and from number systems and with say prime numbers and composite numbers and, 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 and multiples of 4 and destructives of radio 5 and 15 and 12 thrown in with some basic ideas of counting to kind of counter that a b c are three distinct integers from 2 to 100 exactly one of a b b c and c a is odd and a b b c and c a they're not two digit numbers a b b c and c a that would come you, you will take that generally as a thumb rule the number is given as a b we are looking at numbers like 32 and 43 this is a b that is 3 into 2 and 4 into 3 and with the quotes you are referring to a two digit number but it is a b we are looking you're referring to the product of a and b so a b b c and c a is odd a b c is a multiple of four 
the arithmetic mean of a and b is an integer and so is the arithmetic mean of a b and c exactly one of a b b c and c a is odd a into b into c is a multiple of 4 try this question make some inferences and then nail it i'm going to give another minute minute and a half because the, the number system the end of this question is very doable very much fun but maybe a little time consuming so try that Exactly one of A into B, B into C, and C into A is odd. When is the product of two numbers odd? Important to think about that. When will the possibility, when can we have a scenario where product of two numbers is odd? Very vital. So think about that. Once you crack that, this question becomes very simple. It was like a puzzle in each of these statements. Exactly one of a, B, B, C, and C, A is odd. It's the most critical puzzle component. If you make the right inference from here, you have two. In the second statement, A into B into C is a multiple of four. That kind of answers itself. That kind of automatically gives you one, one, one simple takeaway. Exactly one of these three is odd. That's a critical point. Product of two numbers is odd when both of them are odd. Only in that scenario. Even number into anything will be even. This statement tells us that two of the numbers are odd and one is even. This statement tells us we're dealing with two odd numbers. One even number. If all three were odd, then all three products would be odd. Only one is odd. One product is odd. That means there are two odd numbers. Suppose if B and C were odd, this will be odd. A is even. So this will be even and this will be even. This tells us, that statement tells us, two of the numbers are odd and one is an even number. A into B into C is a multiple of four. That tells us there are two odd numbers. Odd into odd into even. It's a multiple of four. This does not give us a, anything for four. This does not give us anything for four. Four can be got by having a multiple of four or multiplying two numbers that are multiples of two. Then we get a four. These two odd numbers cannot give us a two. On the even number we have, it's a multiple of four. One. So we have two odd numbers. One even number. Further, that even number is a multiple of four. We're dealing from numbers from two to ten. This even number is four or eight. One of these two. Wonderfully narrowed down. The arithmetic mean of a and b is an integer. Brilliant. So a plus b by two is an integer. Or a plus b is an even number. a plus b by 2 is an integer. a plus b should be an even number. Think about this. Odd plus odd is even. Even plus even is also even. Odd plus even is odd. Or a and b have to be either both odd or both even. And we cannot have one odd number and one even number. We cannot have both to be even because we are dealing with two odd numbers and one even number. This tells us A and B are both odd and C 
is either 4 or 8. So I'm going to take that set of inferences and then build again. We know that A and B are both odd. You see, is 4 or 8. A and B have to come from 3, 5, 7, 9. C could be 4 or 8. We're talking about unordered triplets, so we just need to have the numbers, nothing else. Let's say C is equal to 4. We have a we know that arithmetic mean of A, B, and C is also an integer. Or A plus B plus C should be a multiple of 3. So C is 4, let's say one number is 4. Then this could we could have 3 plus 5, 3 plus 7, 3 plus 9, 5 plus 7, 5 plus 9, 7 plus 9. These are the totals possible. 3 plus 5 is 8, 10, 12, 12, 14, 16. If C were 4, 4 plus 8, 12, this would work. 4 plus 10, 14, that won't work. 4 plus 12, 16, that won't work. 16, that won't work. 4 plus 14, 18, that will work. 7 plus 9, 16, 4 plus 16, 20, that won't work. So two possibilities exist with 4, or the numbers would be 4, 3, 5, 4, 5, 9. C could be 8. If C were 8, 8 plus 8, 16, this won't work. 8 plus 10, 18, that will work. 8 plus 12 won't work. 8 plus 12 won't work. 8 plus 14, 22 won't work. 8 plus 16, 24 will work. Or we could have 8, 3, 7, 8, 7, 9. Numbers from 2 to 10, tick. Two odd numbers, one even number, tick. The even number being a multiple of 4, check, that works. The two odd numbers being A and B, that works. Sum of three numbers being a multiple of 3, that also works. So we have 4 triplets possible. 435, 459, 837, 879. Ask for unordered triplets. So we don't need to worry about 4353, 455534, all that. Just want to have unordered. What are the triplets possible? Four triplets are possible that satisfy all these criteria. So you know two to three units of number system, one unit of permutation combination. Com combination of these two. I'm counting, but I don't need any of my NPR and CR factorial business. I just need my number system and need to be methodical about counting. Okay. I'm going to do this slightly differently so that we can explore one other method. But once again, a very doable, very much a fun question. If we listed all numbers from 100 to 10,000, how many times would the digit 3 be printed? Beautiful question. 100 to 10,000. We are effectively saying that think about all three digit numbers, 100 to 999, and all four digit numbers, 1000 to 9999. 10,000 being a five digit number and only one number that doesn't have a three, so we don't have to worry about it. All three digit numbers and all four digit numbers. That's what we are worrying about. So we are thinking about all numbers of the form A, B, C, all numbers of the form A, B, C. 
want to reconstruct this question, not think of it like this. I want to think of it like this, but I'm not going to say A goes from 1 to 9, B 0 to 9, C 0 to 9, C 0 to 9. I'm going to say I'm going to take four digits A, B, C, D. A can go from 0 to 9, B from 0 to 9, C from 0 to 9, D from 0 to 9. I'm counting all numbers from 0, 0, 0, 0 to 9, 9, 9, 9. Are effectively 1 to 10,000 accounting for these two exceptions. Instead of 10,000, I'm counting 0. 0 and 10,000 don't have 3s, so I don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to account for all of these. Then I'll worry about that 1 to 99 exception differently. I'm reconstructing this question. I'm saying A, B, C, D. I'm accounting for all numbers from 0 to 9999. 3 can get printed here, 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 here. How many times will the digit 3 get be printed here? This way 3. So go from 0 to 9, 0 to 9, 0 to 9. 10 into 10 into 10. 1000 times it will get printed here. When does it get printed here? Or how many times will it get printed here? When it's printed here. This will go 0 to 9, 0 to 9, 0 to 9. Once again, a thousand times it gets printed. 0 to 9, 0 to 9, 0 to 9. Thousand times it gets printed. 0 to 9, 0 to 9, 0 to 9. Thousand times it gets printed. Or it gets printed 4,000 times. I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking this guy has got it wrong. Some of these numbers will have, we're, we're counting them again. There could be a scenario where I have a number like 3038. I'll count it here in this list and in this list. If you're indeed thinking that, that's the right way of thinking, but you need to adjust for it. We need to count this number in this list and in this list because we are counting the number of times 3 gets printed. 3 gets printed in the thousandth place and the tenth place in this number. So we do have to count it as two threes. I'm not counting the number of numbers that have a 3. Then I'll count 3038 as a number. Thinking how many times 3 gets printed? 3 gets printed in the thousandth place 100 times, 1000 times, in the hundredth place 1000 times, tens place 1000 times, and units place 1000 times. 3 gets printed 4000 times totally from 0 to 9999 or 1 to 10,000. Now let's think about 1 to 99. Think of it as A, B to be 0 to 9, this is 3, this is 3, 0 to 9, 10 plus 10, 20 times. Out of the 4,000 times, I should not account for this 20 or I'm looking at 3, 9, 8, 0. What is this 20? Effectively 3, 30, 23, 33, all the way to 93, 30, 31, 32, all the way to 39. 10 times the units place, 10 times the tens place. Those 20 times, I've counted them when a list is 4,000, but I should not be counting them because I'm worried only from 100 to 10,000. So I reduce this 20 to get 3980, which is the relevant number I should keep in mind for this question. Right. Going step by step is a useful, useful idea. Thinking about three digit numbers and four digit numbers is useful, no doubt about it. But sometimes it's useful to bypass it. So, why do you want to do three digit and four digit? Let's suppose this question is from one to 10,000. I can imagine students saying, I'll count single digit numbers, two digit numbers, three digit numbers, and four digit numbers. Who cares? Call it A, B, C, D. Remove that constraint on the leading digit. The leading digit need not go from one to nine, it can go from zero to nine. So, a four digit number can be thought of as Two, three, five, six. A two-digit number, say 47, can be thought of as 0047. I can add two leading zeros and reimagine that number in my ABCD frame. I won't call it a four-digit number, but I'm accounting for it if I can say A can also be zero. That's all I need for the for the counting end of this question. Let's try the next one. A very good question, high quality question. Try this. Oh. 
all numbers from 1 to 150 in decimal system are written in base 6 notation. How many of these will contain zeros? And some of these questions I really love to list down a few of them, take some random numbers, convert them to, to base 6, see those numbers, and then start working. I'm going to do that process. 1 to 100, 1 will be 1, 2 will be 2, 3 will be 3, 4, 5, 6 will become 1, 0, 7 will be 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 0, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 3, 0. This is how the numbers will go. This is 1 to 6, 7 to 12, 13 to 18. Just imagining this number. So, let's say we have a number like 45. How will this be in base 6? 5 by 6. You know, 7 times remind of 3. Divide by 6. 1. Remind of 1. How this will be? 1, 1, 3. 1 into 36, 1 into 6, 3 into 1. So this is going to be a 3 digit number in base 6. We've written out a bunch of 2 digit numbers. There are some 3 digit numbers as well. When will the 3 digit number begin? What is the first 3 digit number? Do we even have a 4 digit number when we're going from 1 to 150? Think about all of that. So reimagine this 1 to 150 in decimal in base 6 notation. Think about that. Construct that. And then go ahead and grab this question. When will there be zeros? I'll give you some more time. I've just, I've just given a bunch of starting points. Like list a bunch of numbers down. See some pattern in them. See the base 6 representation. Feel those numbers. Look at them. Stare at them. That kind of thing really helps. Listing down really helps. Now think about which of these will contain zeros. We've already seen a few of those base 6 notation have zeros in them. What is special about those numbers? What kind of numbers will have a zero? I'm going to jump in and do a little bit of counting. So this this number ends in a zero. This number ends in a zero. This number ends in a zero. In decimal system, this is six. This is twelve. This is eighteen. We have four zero, which is twenty-four. Five zero, which is thirty. You cannot have a six zero. We have one zero zero, which is thirty-six. All of these numbers have a zero. How many of these will contain zeros? All these numbers have a zero. So what is special about these numbers? Which numbers are these? Think about this. Quite simple. These are all numbers that have multiples of six. Any multiple of six will end in a zero. In decimal, any multiple of ten will end in a zero. In base six, any multiple of six will end in a zero. All multiples of six will end in zero. We are effectively saying 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36, all the way till 150. All these numbers will contain a zero. Or we have totally 25 numbers on this list. 150 is 25 into 6. Brilliant. These 25 numbers have a zero. Remember, this question doesn't say how many of these will end in a zero. How many of these contain zeros? Might there be numbers which don't end in a zero but contain a zero? So let's think about it. Let's think about 150. 150 when converted to base 6, divide this by 6, that 25, end in a zero, divide this by 6, that 4, 1. 150 is 4, 1, 0. It ends in a zero. This contains a zero. Lovely. It got this. 410 
question number that n channel 0 we have counted for this. So out from 1 to 150, we have only three digit numbers in base 6. We have already counted numbers where the last digit is 0. We cannot have this digit being 0, that will be a two digit number. We will have to think about scenarios where the middle digit is 0. Is that possible? 410, can we have a 401? Is that possible? What is 401 in base 6 in decimal? That's 1 into 1, 0 into 6, 4 into 36, 144 plus 1, 145. 145 should also get counted. 402 is 146, 403 is 147, 404 is 148, 405 is 119, 410 is 150. This we have already counted. I'm going to recount that. 401 to 405, all of these. We had 25. And we have five more. Now let's tweak this. We have counted from 401 to 405. We'll be able to count from 301 to 305 as well. 201 to 205 as well. 101 to 105 as well. Five numbers, five numbers, five numbers, and five numbers in this list. 20 more numbers have a zero in them. Zero being the middle digit. We are already down up to 25 plus 20, 45 numbers. 45 numbers have a zero in them when written in base 6. Numbers could end in a zero. It's a many multiple of 6, we count all of that. The middle number could be zero. Here we count the scenarios where the middle digit is zero. The, the sixth place is zero, but not the unit place also be zero. We won't count numbers like 1, 0, 0, 2, 0, 0, 3, 0, 0, 1, 4, 0, 0, because we've already counted them. So leaving those out, we get 5 in each bundle, 4 bundles, 20. So 25 numbers have their last unit digit as 0. 20 numbers have their 6th digit place as 0 without having their unit place as 0, because that we've already counted. The 100th place equal in the 36th place, 6 squares place being 0 is not possible. We are counting only up to three digit number. So 45 numbers totally contain zeros. Wonderful question. I roll a die four times. In how many outcomes do we have? Two throws have the same number. And the other two, something different. In all of the entire questions, it is very vital to write down a few outcomes so that you know what you are counting. And so we are effectively saying we we'll count 2, 2, 5, 6. Two throws have the same number, and two have something different. We we'll count 3, 3, 1, 2. We will also count 3, 1, 2, 3. We will also count 2, 6, 5, 2. Two throws same, the other two something different. And build a process to counting this. Again, I'll give some time, maybe a minute, minute and a half to think about this and how do we go about this. And so we can say the four throws are A, B, C, D. Technically, this can go from one to six, one to six, one to six, one to six. But write down some process and say this can go from one to six. This is same as this. This is different from both of them. This is different from A, B, and C. And then count step by step. That means we are accounting for A and B being same, C, B being different from each other and from A, B. And then account for all of those possibilities. A, B being same, A, C, A, B, B, C, B, D, and C, D. Count each of them separately. But that's one approach. And so what are we doing here? A goes from 1 to 6, 6 options. B, so let's reconstruct this. A, B, C, D. A goes from 1 to 6, 6 options. B is same as A, 1 option. 
C should be 1 to 6 except A. That is five options. B should be 1 to 6 except A and C. Four options. 6 into 1 into 5 into 4. 105. This is a scenario where A and B are same. C, B are different. Something else. You could have a scenario where A and C are same. B and B are different from from A and C. And A and D being same. B, C different. B, C same. B, D same. C, D same. And we can count for, account for all of them. That's one approach. So A equal to B, not equal to C, not equal to D is that much. You could have A equal to B, A equal to C, A equal to D, the other two being different. B equal to C, B equal to D, and C equal to D. So this two being same can happen in six different ways. In one sequence, we have 120, 120 into 6, 720. That's one approach. Other approaches, we have four A, B, C, D. Now, don't think about A, B, C, and D. Think about from 1 to 6. For our number, we need to have three values. Select them. In how many ways can they be done? 6, C, 3. And so we need to have three values out of these coming to us. And so we have one repeating, so we need to select three. In 63 ways, we are probably left with, say, 2, 3, and 5. Now, one of these repeats, which one is that? That can be selected in 3C1 ways. Let us say now we are left with 2, 3, 5, 5. 5 repeats. So I'm going step by step. I'm selecting three numbers from 1 to 6. I've got them in the back. That can be done in 63 ways. First, let us say I have 2, 3, 5 as a 3 selection. Out of these, one of the digits repeats. So I grab 2, 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 3, 5, 2, 3, 5, 5. Which one repeats? Selecting that, the three options. Let's say 3, C, 1, that three options. At the end of the stage, we are left with 2, 3, 5, 5. Now, the number could be 2, 3, 5, 5, 2, 5, 3, 5, 2, 5, 5, 3, etc., etc., etc. The different ways of arranging this. In how many ways can that be arranged? 4 factorial by 2 factorial by base. 6C3 is 6 into 5 into 4 by 1 into 2 into 3. Just 20 into 3, 60 into 12. We're thinking about 20 into 3 into 12, 60 into 12, 720. From here, we're selecting three values. Then we are selecting the one that repeats. Once you have selected this 2355, five, that can be made to sit in these many ways. The number of ways of doing this, into number of ways of doing this, into number of ways of putting them in order. Multiply all of that, you'll get into total number. The first method we did, we said A equal to B, A, let us assume A equal to B. How many ways are possible? We could have a scenario where A is B and equal A and C, A and D. B and C, B and D, C and D. For each of those, we reconstruct something. Shall we time? Let's do a few more. I'm really enjoying myself. Lots of good questions here. Once again, many thanks, Arvind. He's put together a wonderful collection of questions. I'll damn it. Let's do a couple more. I roll a die four times. In how many outcomes will each subsequent throw be greater than the previous one? This is one of my favorite questions. Some questions very similar to this have appeared in CAT. We have a question where we say, how many three-digit numbers exist where when we go from left to right, the digits are in ascending order? Or how many three-digit numbers exist where when we go from right to left, the numbers are in ascending order? Similar to that, we are rolling a die four times. In how many outcomes will each subsequent throw be greater than the previous one? Beautiful question. Well, it is a nice, wonderful, elaborate way of solving it. Another way of solving it that takes exactly 10 seconds. I'm going to give you one, two minutes, hoping that you do this nice roundabout way. Then I can act like a big hero and give you the 10 second method.
in how many outcomes will each subsequent throw be greater than the previous one so we could have a scenario where it is 1 2 4 6 2 3 4 5 1 3 4 6 the first throw cannot be more than 3 there are 3 4 5 6 but this can't be 4 the first throw can only be 1 2 or 3 second one can only be 2 3 or 4 can't do like that. Can't then it's the first throw where two, the second throw can't be two. The conditional part comes in. You cannot say let's say this is A, B, C, D. This can be only one, two, three, this can only be two, three, four, this can only be three, four, five, this can be four, five, six. Three possibilities for each multiply that. That is wrong. You can do that only if no matter which one of these three this is, this could be any one of these. This could be two, this could be two, this could be five, this could be four. That's not possible. What value A takes drives the possibility for B. So we cannot just say A can take three values, B can take three values, A can take three values. Depending on which of the three values A has taken, B can take some values. And so if A were 3, B can only be 4. That becomes an issue. No matter. Right? So what is a 10 second method? Beautiful. Each throw is greater than the previous one. That means no two throws are same. That's a starting point. So all our four throws are different. Let's say we select the values. Let's forget what order it is. We have to select four distinct values out of this. 6, C, 4, base. Let's say we have selected 6, 2, 3, and 1. So 4 out of these 6 get selected because the digits are distinct. They are selected like this. What could be the order? The order has to be only 1, 2, 3, 6. It has to be ascending order. Or the answer is 6, C, 4. This question, in other words, becomes from the set of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. In how many ways can you select 4 distinct? From 1 to 6, in how many ways can you select 4? 6 e 4, and which is same as 6 e 2, 6 into 5 by 1 into 2. You're done. This question is wonderful and wonderfully simple. And basically saying, in how many ways can you select 4 numbers from 6? From 1 to 6, in how many ways can you select 4 numbers? Right? Then digit question, 3 digit number, 2 digit number, ascending order, descending order. It will effectively from 10 digits, how can you select 3? Sometimes it's going to be 10, sometimes it's going to be 9, depending on whether you're going left to right or right to left. Whether 0 can be a possibility, not a possibility, etc. 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 So just worry about that a little bit. And but otherwise it's very similar to this. Let's let's soldier on two, maybe one or two more. A cooler question, give it a go. A pack contains four red and three black balls. The second pack contains two red and three black balls. One ball pack is selected at random. From a selected pack, one ball is drawn. What is the probability that the ball drawn is red? Pack one, we have four red and three black. Bag two, we have two red and three black. First up, we have to select one of these two. And then we want to see the select one ball from this. If we had selected this bag, then probability of red ball is 4 by 7. If we had selected this, probability of red bag, red ball is 2 by 5. If we don't know which one has been selected. The bag is selected at random. It will be this bag or this bag. Probably you're selecting this bag is 1 by 2. This one is 1 by 2. So our probability is 4 by 7 into 1 by 2 plus 2 by 5 into 1 by 2. Whatever that turns out to be. So 2 by 7 plus 1 by 5. Take the LCM, simplify and all of that. Now, there's an interesting variant of this question. 
This question could very well have been if the selected bag were red, what is the probability that the first bag was selected? Brilliant. If you are given the probability, if you are told that red has been selected, and then you are asked what is the chance that we indeed selected the first bag the first time around? That's a very interesting question. You try that question. That question is based on the idea of Bayes theorem. So that question is very useful. Uh, probably not relevant for CAD. So Bayes theorem, the idea of Bayes theorem that is slightly tougher than what you can see in CAD. But that question is still possible, still doable. Understand what I'm asking. I'm not saying what is the probability that the ball drawn is red. We know the red ball has been selected. What is the probability that we indeed selected the first bag? Very interesting. Very, very, very often we do we take this decision. Like we do this practical thing in life. In real life, we evaluate probabilities all the time like this. After an event, what path was chosen? So you, you take a blood test, the blood test result comes out positive for something. What are the chances that it is indeed a disease? That's what you're doing. You're not evaluating the probability given a test. What is the probability the test will be positive? Given a, an illness, what is the probability test will be positive? That's not what you're evaluating. The doctor makes a decision on the likelihood of a person having an ailment. Given the final data point that you indeed, the test result is indeed positive. Given test result is positive, I know the outcome. I know it is positive. What is the probability that you suffer from the illness? So given a subsequent fact, what is the likelihood that a certain path was taken before? That's the kind of decision we do very frequently. All of us want to know this. Given this person who got an I'm Ahmedabad, what are the chances that he scored more than 99.7? One way, that's what you want to know. Can I get in? With a 99.2. Are you given an admit? What are the chances of a 99.2 in CAT for a guy? With a 99.2, what are my chances of getting in? That is one question. The guys who have gotten in, how many of them have got smaller percentage? That's what you want to know, really. You're asking this question, but you want to know that. Of the 200 guys from, from general category in IM of the bar, how many have got less than 99.65? That's what I want to know. I want to know the, the, what I can get into not standing a poor performance. So given 99.2, how many guys go into IIM Ahmedabad? This is not a great number. Given he's in IIM Ahmedabad, how many have got below 99.65? That's what I want to know. That tells me that if I don't get 99.65, what are my chances still? And what does that guy have going for him or her, that person? So, very often, after an end data point, we evaluate the probability of what path might have taken that person to them. So, if a person is in IIM Ahmedabad, what are the chances that they did not score 99.65 but still got in? I want to know that. If I'm not confident of my CAT percentile, I want to be that person. I want to be that example exception who sneaks in with a 99.1. And I want to know what are my chances. In other words, if I got only 7.3 in my undergrad vision, what are my chances of getting into IM of the bar? Of the 200 guys general categories for an IM of the bar, how many have 7.3 or lesser? And for them, what CAT percentile did they have? Is what you want to know. Given a 7.3, what are my chances? It's evaluated by given he's in, how many had 7.3 or lesser? Other way of thinking, other problem. There will be lots and lots of guys who got 10.3 who are not an IM of the bar. They don't they give us jack. What is the point? The guy got 10.3, he didn't go to Amdaman. What can I do with this percentage? I want the data about how many people are in IM of the bar, but they've got 10.3 or lesser in their UG. And if that number is a minuscule half a percent, that, that guy's got lots of other things going for him, then I know that 10.3 is a it's a deadbeat score. I just simply cannot go there. So the, 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 given an end result, what is the probability of a certain path that you do? This is the kind of evaluation we do very frequently. We don't stop and process it, but that's what we do frequently. Let's see if we can squeeze in one more. 
In how many ways can six boys be allotted into four into five rooms such that no room is empty and all six boys are accommodated? So I'm going to rush through this. We have A, B, C, D, E, F. So two zero one, two zero two, two zero three, two zero four, five. Six boys into five rooms. No room is empty. All six boys are accommodated. What does this tell us? This tells us that there's got to be some room that double occupancy. Some room has to have two boys. The number of boys has to be one, 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 two. Some room has two boys sitting there. The rest of the rooms have exactly one. So let's focus on this two. Some two boys are paired together. Let's first say which two. Let's make our life simpler. Select two out of these, put them together. How many ways can that be done? Six C2. Let's say B and E are together. So we are at a stage where we have B and E together, A, C, D, F. And they have to be put into five rooms. Now B and E are together. It's one unit. We call it an X. But X, A, C, D, F going into five rooms. In how many ways can they go into five rooms? Five people, five rooms, five factory. Or I'm looking for an answer which is 6C2 into 5 factorial, whatever that number turns out. But to break this down, understand what's happening, that there is one room that has double occupancy. There are got to be two guys who are roommates. Locate those two guys and then say, okay, these two are together. Now what do I do? Five people, five rooms. Five people or four people and one double occupancy, one B put together, call it X. X A C D F going into five rooms, five factorial base. Six C two into five. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. So by the time I'm sure you will be able to see. So wonderful topic. It's a. It's not that difficult a topic. It's a topic that can be a lot of fun if you learn it the right way with the right framework. You're not just jumping in and doing N C R N B R for every question. Don't do that. Cat questions are going to be a combination of a little bit of number systems or a little bit of logic and then some competition combination. Don't look at questions and say, okay, there's six boys allotted into five rooms. Can I do six C5, six P5? Very, very, very frequently it is none of those. And so the choices will usually be like that. Seeing plenty of questions which goes with five boys and three girls fit in a are in a classroom. In how many ways can they be made to stand such that no two girls are together? And so and the choices will be 6 part 3, 6 C3, 6 P3, and something else. And so straight away you can eliminate 6 P3 and 6 C3. 6 boys and 3 girls. 6 P3 or 6 C3 means from the set of 6, you're selecting 3 with or without order. 6 boys and 3 girls, no matter what you do, you cannot select 3 girls from 6 boys. And so don't jump into an NPR, NCR framework just because that's that's the thing that you know. Solve intuitively. Build your logic. Reconstruct the questions. Please write a few possibilities down. See the end result. Once you write it down, the methods will pop up. I roll a die four times. Two outcomes are same. Two outcomes are different. Two, two, one, three. Three, three, five, four. Write that down. Then the method will come on its own. So back yourself to find the method. After writing down a few numbers, don't, don't try to jump into set frameworks. As much as possible, solve intuitively and, 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 and with a few possibilities, build from there. Don't always look for a very formalized approach. Right? So I'm going to jump out and say we've had enough good session. I enjoyed myself. I hope you guys did too. Uh, it's a fabulous, fabulous topic, but not heavily tested. So don't go to town doing a, a gazillion really tough question. This topic and a little bit of number systems. These are the two things that people go crazy over. But number systems and reminders. I don't know what is the fetish for cat aspirants and reminders. And nothing will remind if you keep focusing only remind, remind, on reminders. And so cat has probably tested roughly zero questions on reminders in the last 10 years. And so no fancier and fancier questions can easily be connected with trickier and trickier ideas on that topic, on, on reminders. That doesn't mean it's either vital or heavily tested. It is neither. And so, but don't go overboard in some of these topics. Combination probability is one such. Don't do gazillion questions on random 
ideas from here. You could do the simple relevant one thing and you stick to the basics. Best wishes. I hope you have a wonderful and once again a reminder, it's a fabulous offer on the Utmaya course. Do check it out. Even forget the offer. Sign in as a trial user. See how the UI works with the learning ticks boxes with you. If it works, then take about mine. I'm very confident it will work with a fabulous product. All the best.